Hi. Today we're doing a house tour, so an apartment tour. I'm gonna make you really funny eyebrows. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. This will delight Haley. Um, and, oh shoot, they go away when I do comments. <laughs> Alright, so this is an Upper East Side apartment house tour. Okay. Haley. Brother. Bird. Alright. Hey, Sophie. Alright, so we'll pin this comment. And then I'll go back to my eyebrows. Which is fun. So I went through, I looked into filters um, the other day. And I'm going to show you a few of my favorite ones. That's nice, right? They still move like at a weird pace. Like you can tell they're digital. <laughs> this one I really liked the shape it made my eye. Um, but it was really fun actually looking into filters. Like this one is gorgeous. Um, so I basically just Googled like best filters for beauty, I think I said. Um, so anyway, today, Sophie, um, first of all, hey, I haven't talked to you in forever, if like at all, I don't even know if we talked much when we were in the same school, but, um, I DM'd you and I really would love to interview you. I was actually, when I lived in Berlin, I actually worked out of the Soho house. Like I would not go to my office. I would just work at the Soho house and I, it got me in a lot of trouble actually, um, but for me, that was the spot. So I'm obsessed with that aesthetic and um, the comforts there. And it's just one of my favorite places. So I'm flipping through all my favorite ones. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't choose that. Okay, now this is weird. So this is the best one I found for like changing eye color. I think it's called Lux Babe. But I feel like it changes everything. Um... Yeah, the Berlin house is so nice. They have the pool. I just feel like you don't, um, you can't use it. Like in the summer, it's like so packed and everything, but it's kind of like the New York thing. Like in the winter, it's like for, um, it's just so cold. Um, but you, are you doing communications for the whole West Coast? Like all, like the various ones in LA? Are you in LA? Um, those questions and more. And I'll keep showing you my filters I found. This is weird, right? So, like... Mm. Okay, here she is. She's probably so freaked out by this filter. <laughs> Haley, I got an eyeball replacement. <laughs> Alright, so let me get you on here. Okay, Sophie, that's amazing. <laughs> what Haley. Happened? You took the filter away. I, well, like, immediately, it's, like, such a glitch, but, like, when it, when I have someone out, when I have to, when I do anything, like, admin, it takes it away from me. Look right. at this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at this one. Let me see. Wait, the eyebrows? Yeah. Oh, my God, that's creepy. Spider eyebrows. Okay, I'm going to put on more normal. I'm going to get, like, a little dressed up for you. Okay, I'm dressed. Pretty, pretty. I put on Hello, some Hello, darling. Are you, you know, healed right now? Why the heck not? You look gorgeous. I want to Thank see a full, you. let me see the whole bod. Oh, the whole bod. I mean, I just, it, it's sort of, it's a little hot today in New York. So I just have, I mean, I have a tank top and jeans. Yay. Basically. Yeah. Do I hear a clicking of heels? Uh, well, let me see if I can turn. It's probably the perfect time. Well, we can wait a second. This, those are my little shoes. <laughs> wait, put it down. We didn't see them. Put them down. Oh, right can you see? Oh, nice. Wait. Okay, are they're those just, flats? They're just little flats, yep. Nice. Little ballerina flats. Nice. So is it a standard work day for you? I'm showing you all my favorite filters. I did a lot of discovery filter time. Perfect. I, I love it. Sparkles are my fave. I'm all about the, the bedazzle. Uh, it is a typical work day, so just home, um, working. I'm hoping to go outside and work on my computer later because it's finally like so gorgeous in New York and it's starting to feel more normal well Yay. normal normal's relative but it's starting to feel more full of life I think yes. so yes we're very adaptable people 
us Mary absolutely uh, we have Sophie Latipe on which she was younger than me but do, doesn't she have an older sister who's friends with you or yes yeah, Sophie's yeah. Yeah, older sister is my best friend yeah and I was texting with Sophie you know about a few minutes ago so I'm glad she's here yeah um okay so what is like do you want to like give us just like how did you find this apartment did you have to fight hard for it give us your real estate savvy on how you found the apartment so uh how i found the apartment it's well it's an interesting and very simple story because i real estate is my profession uh residential real estate like i you know have a little more intel than than the average person that this where this isn't their profession so uh there's a block that i have been eyeing since i was a little girl that i've absolutely loved on 73rd street on the upper east side and every winter from like november to march all the trees are lit up on this street so i remember walking by it when i was in middle school and high school and in the winter and just it made me happy and lit me up every time every time i walked by are the trees lit up like all year round or just for Christmas? Not all year round. So just for like the holiday season, basically. Yeah. And bring, is, it all the way down, is it all the way down 73rd, like all the way through the, the different avenues or? It's only on, it's only between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. Okay. So this block, it's a historic block in the city. Um, the Back in, you know, pre-war times, um, in the 1920s, 1930s, there was a developer in New York who established a lot of buildings here, and they, you can spot them in different neighborhoods throughout the city, but they're very, like, iconic and all have a similar aesthetic to them. So if you're familiar with the construction company, which was called Bing & Bing Construction, who at the time partnered with an architect called Emery Roth, and they became sort of legendary of their era. And they have this block that I live on. It's called Eastgate. And the whole entire block is all their buildings. Pretty much. Pretty much all their buildings. And they're all uniform and look beautiful, classical. So you, you walk down the block in each building. It's sort of a traditional uniform feel. They also have an area in the East 50s called Southgate, which is sort of the sister neighborhood of this block. And then on Christopher Street in the West Village, there are a few Bing and Bing construction buildings. And you'll see Emery Roth on the Upper West Side, a lot of Emery Roth. So it was part of a old world era of New York. And I've always really loved their style. And so yeah, what characterizes I, the style, Haley? What's the style of Bing and Bing and Emery Roth? The style is traditional uh, pre-war I wish I could walk outside and show you. Perhaps I can, but you know what? Let's just do that. I'll Are they pre-war like how I think of a building that's maybe on 88th and Park, like with doorman and like a stone, like a beige stone? Exactly. So pre-war okay. like Park Avenue, Madison Avenue, and Fifth Avenue, all of that for the most part is classic pre-war construction. Yeah. So Emery Roth just had of that category of building – Emery Roth had a specific attention to detail that I've always loved. So you can see craftsmanship in their stonework that's very unique. Um, even the light, lighting fixtures they used outside the buildings are beautiful. So it was just an attention to detail, uh, a lot of handcrafted stone. So, so of cool. that category. And who introduced yeah. you to, who, was it your mom who like showed you and said, this is Bing and Bing, like when you were a, a young girl? You know what? That's a great question. Yes, it was. It was like, cause I like living in New York, as you did, you start to get familiar with the difference, like certain buildings when it's pre-war, it's very evident they're pre-war. So if you're a New Yorker, yeah. you are able you to learn what pre-war is like when you're in high school. Yeah. Right, exactly. You're able to delineate between that and a building that was built, for example, in the fifties and sixties, which looks just, it's completely the other uh, other side of the spectrum, the complete opposite side of the spectrum of the pre-war. So I used to really like, when I would see the 73rd Street block, I loved it. And I, you know, would ask my mom. And so she gave me a little bit of the history and I kind of was obsessed with it ever since. And when I was working, you know, very diligently in real estate, um, 
it was my passion. I always loved interior design. And as you know, Marguerite, like I'm obsessed with aesthetics. So anything, mm -hmm. I'm a visual person. So anything visually beautiful, it makes me happy. Okay, so because you just said that, I'm going to let you choose my filter. So I'm going to give you a couple <gasps> options. So there's this. Perfect. I don't think that is one. There's this. Ooh, this is a little going. much. Keep going. There's this. Let me try to get my, oh, this, this is totally Upper East Side. That's, that's uh, no, definitely not the You're vibe like, no. of this neighborhood. Um, there's this. I think I like the sparkly, right? I love, anyway. I like this. Ooh, that one's fun, but that's a Look little at, distracting. This is terrible. That's a little scary. <laughs> that one's kind of cool. You want to know what? The retro but, one, the one you were just on before. This? That, well, eh, I was going to say, it seems kind of like old world. It, it reminds me of an old uh, photo, but that, that was scary. If you you're guys, if anybody likes these, your these filters took so much research. Whoa. <laughs> these, like, these filters took maybe a half hour of research, and then I just downloaded all the ones that were, like, recommended from all the blog posts. Um, oh. So if anybody likes any of these, I can tell you which ones I found. But obviously nothing's great, right? Ooh. And now we're just getting into the standard ones. All right. Let's get into the house tour. I'm going to go back to the glittery. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Uh, oh, your okay, friend Frederica so just from joined. The front. Uh, Mary Mount Powell. Yes. I, I stumbled upon this apartment, uh, and I wasn't necessarily planning to move forward and do this at the time, but I fell so in love with it, and it needed, it was a great deal at the time, and it needed a lot of work. So I came in, it was a pr essentially scoop everything out and start from scratch situation, other than the kitchen, which okay, was in okay shape. I have a question. How do you know when you go into an apartment and you're like, ooh, this is like something I'm going to need to do a lot of editing to? It's... It's pretty self-evident. To you, I think. Well, it's self-evident and does it feel, it, 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 are things, you know, breaking down, cracking? Does it, okay. is it very, very dated feeling? So that's just self-evident to anyone. However, the added layer to that, which people don't realize, um, unless they have experience with this already, is the behind the scenes, like electrical work that often needs to be done to update uh, an older building, you know, an older building, an older apartment, like all new electrical work often has to be done. If you touch anything in New York City to do renovation, all the plumbing back to the building risers has to be done. So it's not just the interior of your apartment, you actually have to get new plumbing that attaches to the building plumbing. Um, same with the kitchen, everything behind the walls has to be made brand new. So it's a really intense process but yeah if you're up for it and you get a really good value then it's worth it um and okay for me, so everything so in your case everything was good except for the kitchen so sh so tell us no what you everything did the was oh not good everything, everything was bad except for the kitchen everything okay. was bad okay except for the kitchen it was uh if you could imagine i mean it looked like it hadn't been touched since 1970 when i okay first got my apartment, other than the kitchen, which I didn't ultimately renovate, because um, I just said I need I need to stop and can't, can't go further with this, but it's okay, and I painted it a cheerful color, so you'll see. Um, and little things you can do to, even if you don't make something new, for example, little things you can do to make it feel newer, so I'll show you what I did in my kitchen. Okay, can't wait. Perfect, so now excited. I have to figure out, now I have to figure out how to, turn the camera around let's see this is so funny this thing it like blanks out my face when there's not enough lighting I just like I mean I look really beautiful I gotta say I mean mm. literally <laughs> literally you're bedazzled and you look gorgeous but I, I've got to say Marguerite all of those filters your face as is is way more beautiful than all of them <laughs> no seriously I believe you because that's why I haven't found great filters <laughs> No, no, but seriously. So, EMD is really excited to see Haley's apartment, and so am I. Let's do it. Oh, okay, perfect. EMD has seen my apartment. She's also obsessed with interior design, so Yay. she and I uh, swap a lot of suggestions between each other, and she, EMD, renovated a gorgeous, beautiful house, so. Is her name, e do you call her EMD? I do not call her EMD. <laughs> She's probably laughing right now. I do not call her EMD. <laughs> What's her name? Elise. 
Elise. Hey, Elise. All right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, great. Wait, Marguerite, how do I turn the camera around? Let's see. That's a great question. Because... I think on mine, there's like a, you, I can do the little, I see a cue in the upper left corner of my screen that would let me sl flip it if I wanted to. Is there a way the, oh, yes. here we go. There we Look go. Look at that classy entrance. Right. So, so this will start word. to feel, okay, so I'm just, I opened my front door. This is my lobby, by the way. Haley, hey, you are living in such style. Hi. Who is this fellow? This is my amazing doorman. Hi, nice my friend, Scott. with the mask. He oh, you said you love them? Oh, I thought you said I don't know who they are, but I love them. <laughs> he does, he does. So that's Scott. This is Hi. my lobby. Do you ever then, sit down in your lobby? Do do I want to sit down? Do you ever sit down? Is there a chair? Oh, do I ever? Uh, not really, because uh, okay. I'm usually just in and out. But this is my front door with the little star. All the doors had stars, which I thought was really cute. Um, so this is walking into my apartment. So you have a hallway with closets. And then there's a gallery area, which is sort of the center between where the bedroom is and it's the bedroom, which I'll turn on the light, the bedroom and the living room. And this is a classic pre-war attribute to having like a gallery. It's pre-war, one of the characteristics of pre-war is a classic formal apartment. So apartments where you see that they have a formal dining room, that's often pre-war, or they have this like formal entry here, that's often pre-war. And another attribute of pre-war is this style curvature uh, doorway. Okay, and then just to get really clear with everyone, which war are we talking about when we say pre-war in New York City? World War II. So before okay. World War II. And, um, but, and so did New York get bombed? Just quickly, did New York get bombed at all? Well, <laughs> great question. And I will show you something interesting if I'm able okay. to show it to you. Uh, let's see. Hold on. I have these, these buildings have fallout shelter signs because they're of that era. Um, if you can look like this is just, you know, back the like start to the back yard area, but you see how it says fallout shelter. Yeah. So I don't, these, the, you know, no, th this, this area wasn't bombed at all, but, but everyone was so scared. So you still have those fallout shelter signs, which is so interesting. Um, but was the idea, Haley, in terms of like that term pre-war among architects in New York, is the, is the, the reason we use it is because people weren't spending as much money on architecture after the war? Is that the case? The style changed. And okay. it, it was just, in, in, in real estate lingo, it's used because it, it's, it has more to do with style completely shifted and changed. And I bet you, I had never... I bet you that it does, part of the reason is people had less funding for sure because the construction of pre-war is much more solid than the construction of what they call post-war in that right. era, that decade after the war. So definitely funding was cut and, and they just. Yeah, maybe also wartime technology and innovation <laughs> created new materials. Um, Question, what is the function right. of a gallery in, in that historical time? What would a woman who lives in this apartment use her gallery for? Just to have a separation of space. So you'll see, you know, in some apartments, you'll have the bedroom and the living room th that share a wall. It's adjoining. In my apartment, the bedroom and the living room do not share a wall at all. So, you know, while it's not a huge space, it's a one bedroom apartment. If theoretically, if someone's in the living room and I'm in my bedroom, I'm not, I don't, I can't hear them through the wall. So it's nice. Mm -hmm. It creates, it creates more privacy. And that's what the gallery serves to do in my apartment. And basically I made it a pretty space. Um, I chose a kind of dusty purple color that I cut with a lot of white. So, so it's really, really faint. Oh, um, interesting. That looks absolutely yeah. like true white to me or like right um, interesting and so it, that is purple so can you pull us up a little bit closer to the wall 
Yes. So this, these moldings, they're called picture moldings. And when you have sort of a blank space like this, here, I'll put, go up to the wall. You're not going to be able to see the purple color yeah. on camera. I can sort of see it. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very faint purple. It's very faint. So just backing up, you, yeah. you'll see a little better the structure of the picture moldings. And when you have like a blank space like this that you're not going to sit in as your living area, for example, it's fun to create a lot of, um, what's the right word, a lot of interest for people want to want to stand in this room and enjoy it a little bit, which is why I went as so far as to do all of the picture molding throughout everything. Cause it, it may, it's almost like a, a gallery. Like if I brought, they call it picture molding for a reason, it would frame art, but it's even art on its own. Hmm. So I wanted to leave it really clean and blank. And I did that. And then this pretty little chandelier actually came with my apartment and I've just kept it all this time. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then this over here, did you do those small light fixtures? The, what do you call those, sconces or something? Sconces, yeah, yes. So this is little sconces. And they all have a sort of classical nature to them. So I tried to balance out a classic feel where all the moldings and all the picture moldings are definitely like reminiscent of pre-war style with um, a, a, like juxtapose that with modern furniture as well. So did my best to kind of bring it all together. And I did seek design help. So I had some really, you know, amazing design minds that I consulted with. So that was extremely helpful. Um, but when you back up in here, you can see the bureau mirror. What do you, um, do you use that bureau at a functional level? Do you have things inside that? I do. I use it as, as, amazing storage. So I have a lot of things okay. inside that, in right. fact. And then those, yes. those chairs, those yellow, what do you call mm -hmm. those? Those are amazing. Yes. So I'll tell you little tidbits about where I got furniture, because I think, you know, during this time where everyone is home, you know, 95% of the time. Yeah. Making our home a space where we really do feel happy and it brings us joy, I'm finding is increasingly important. And, you know, friends that I'm talking to as well, like it's, Instead, with we were there were so many distractions with so much activity, especially living in New York City. There's so much to do. Uh, where by now people are home so much, and I'm finding people's focus shifting. Um, so I'm I'm happy to share kind of some tips to make small spaces feel more comfortable, feel more vibrant, and um, more functional. So like this, this chest of drawers here, like tons of space inside of that. So anything you can do, especially in New York City, in a one bedroom apartment or a studio to add extra space where you can hide it, that's always helpful. These little benches, Jonathan Adler, I have a lot of pieces from Jonathan Adler. And I love Jonathan Adler. I'll tell you why in a second. I see we have some questions. Let's see. Yeah, we do. Um, how do you estimate rehab costs before purchasing the apartment? Do you being inside in outside or do you bring in outside consultants, contractors to help you budget? So I'm trying to switch the camera again. Okay. If, Cause it feels like a ghost talking. I feel like, um, Oh, it's not letting me, but okay. So let's just listen to my voice. Hopefully, okay. hopefully, uh, that'll be good enough. So, to answer that question, when you're looking at a project and you know that it's going to need work, I always recommend getting, first of all, finding a contractor that you trust um, and getting a couple additional names. So let's say you have three contractor contacts uh, and you are looking for an investment property or you're looking for your own home. And maybe your focus is to find something to rehab because you know that you can get a better value for it as long as you put in work. To be able to run those numbers efficiently, you have to consult with contractors and get an idea of how much different types, parts of a renovation cost. So Wait, Haley, Sarah yes. had an amazing idea. She says, selfie style in the mirror. Point the camera to the mirror. Oh my okay. gosh, Sarah, thank you so much. <laughs> Yay. Okay, perfect. So we if can you talk feel comfortable, like you know, you can go up closer maybe if you want. Okay. 
Sarah, oh my God, that's so funny. She knows my apartment, so she knows where to position me so you can see, see my face. That's hysterical. Uh, okay, great. So uh, does it look like I'm looking at you now? Okay. Yeah. Um, for example, how much does it cost to do floors? You know, maybe a property has uh, a renovated kitchen, but the floors are decrepit and you know that you need to either pull them up entirely or re-sand them, which are two completely different costs. If you pull them up entirely, that obviously is gonna cost more. But if they are the type of floors that they're not complete, like they, they have not been skimmed too many times, there is a little bit of integrity left in the floor, then you might be able to just sand them and repolish it. Two very different things. And it's really important to know from a contractor using this as an example, which route that you'd have to go. Because if you do have to go ripping up all the floors, then costs come in where you have to, for example, soundproof underneath and insulate and all of these costs that you, you know, don't think about and wouldn't factor in. So having that contractor consultant in advance, and I know like some people on this call are looking at making investments. So that's what I say in doing your research now, talking to the real estate professionals is excellent, but asking the real estate professionals, what is that? Ooh. Trini, I'm just showing, cause I get, always get questions when I put on makeup during lives. Oh it's really? Trini, I really like Trini Woodall. I mean, her products are okay, but I love her as a woman. Really? Okay, well maybe you gotta get her on one of these lives. Oh, she's, I would only be so lucky. Ezekiel just came, but I'm so lucky to be with you cause you're like my, you're my princess oh. goddess. Oh, Marjorie. Ezekiel just came on, who's my best friend, and he Aww. is, like, big time into real estate. He's, like, probably so excited to get back to this tour. And I love that you're answering the question about contract contractors. Yes, yes. So just to end the response to that, find contractors in advance, start consulting with them so you have a general idea of what the various uh, things that you would do in an, in an apartment or a house would cost. And also when you zone in on a property that you really like, ask the contractor if he would do a courtesy, he or she would do a courtesy quote for you. Because then if you have that, then there are no question marks. And many contractors are very willing to do that. So I've often done that with my clients. They zone in on something and I make sure we get a contractor in to give us a full quote so that they don't have to go in, in gray zone. They can know all of the numbers in advance and do the calculations based on that. Fab. Yeah. Art. Um, so just to give like Ezekiel and anyone else who joined context, we're, on, we're in the seventies. I want to keep anonymity a little bit. We're in the seventies in Manhattan. Um, we are in Haley's one bedroom apartment. And so we are turning back. Let's see what else we can see in here. So we've just looked at the gallery. Okay, great. Right. right. So, yep. Just, it was, this was the gallery area here. And now I'm going to walk you into my living room. So nice. Haley. Which is here. You are living. I know. Like I, I've the never had. You are. You've I never love come it. over. What's the deal with those windows? What's the deal with the windows? Are you tempted to do different things with the windows, like drapes and so on? You want to know what, Marguerite? You have. You're so funny because your eye is. You're so detail oriented and your eye goes to exactly the right things. Literally, my whole apartment's done except for that. I need drapes. I feel like you I need looking like, at this. I feel like you need like really elegant drapes with like the tassel. I do. Yeah. And maybe people can give me suggestions. Like if they watch your live back, they can give me suggestions of what type of drapes or uh, I, I've looked into some things. So that's the only thing I'm finished. And frankly, it's a work in progress always for me because yes. I like adding things. But this is my living room. So you walk in and I have the dining. Love it. Area here, which is not a dining. Like it's not a dining area. Show you us know, the chairs. These chairs... Here we go. My so little, nice. they're my little French Renaissance chairs. Where did you get them? I was actually looking back to see if I could remember um, looking through some of my emails before this. I don't remember where I got the chairs. I remember where I got pretty much everything else. So I can give you the yeah. tidbits on that for everything else. But these chairs, I could follow up and then let you know. Yeah, but of course. They were really? They were, they were like, so, you know, doing, when you're doing interior design, not that I'm a guru on that by any means, but I consulted with so many people asking a lot of questions to try to bring it together as best as possible. And what I learned is, you know, certain pieces you'll invest in. So like this piece, for example, 
which is my media cabinet, I invested in. So, the, you know, it was, I, I spent more money on a piece like this because it's such a significant large piece in the room. But then I was able to save a lot of money on these chairs because these chairs were about like 200 ish each. And I know like, that's not a little amount of money by any means. However, when you're researching furniture, you see, you'll find chairs that are a thousand dollars a piece. Like it's yeah. insane. And they actually may not look as good of quality as other ones that you can find for a much lower price point. So I found these and I thought they worked. I think uh, what I love about them is they look kind of classic. Like you almost expect that these are going to be like bronze finished or something, but then they've got this modern, like light raw wood. And then I also right. really like like the delicacy of the color. It's, and it's that sort of purple color. So my friend keeps mentioning that you love powder purple. Yeah, you see a couple of my friends here, Sarah and Elise are commenting, you can tell that Haley loves purple. So purple is my favorite color. Uh, and you know, and I did Sophie purple chairs. And about the view too. Oh, the view, okay. So I live on the first floor, which is really interesting because uh, I never thought that I would. But you know, there's nothing, there's always a compromise when you're looking at real estate, huge lesson for everyone to know in advance there's always going to be a compromise. You have to decide what your compromise is. My compromise is I can see the garbage below here, like for um, the backyard area of my building, but I decided it's covered and it's not offensive. And I decided that was going to be my compromise. I think but it's then, so lovely. It's like so lovely. You. You're in this like protected back area. So you're not dealing with like potential like break-ins. Right, exactly. And this is uh, 74th Street. So you're looking at the backs of the pretty townhouses. And it's kind of cool. I, I find it I find it peaceful. But it's you know, fair. like this isn't that pretty. And this is what my bedroom looks at. So you, you got to find your compromises. Yes. decide What's your most important priority. And for me, I, I just love the space. And I felt that I could be comfortable here. And, you know, I got a good deal. But I went through a lot to make it nice. Because, you know, I spent almost a year renovating this. So that that's another thing. So this is the rest of the living room. Oh, I can see what you mean about the kitchen, but I actually love it. It's like, I love that you ca that, that kitchen has, I mean, I haven't seen too much into it, but I love the contrast of the style you have in this room. And then that kind of quote, unfinished kitchen that's from a sort of different era. When was Definitely. the last renovated? Uh, well, the actual apartment itself was not renovated since the beginning of inception of the building, but the kitchen was probably renovated in the 1980s would be my guess. Okay. So I painted this wall teal, which my friends will laugh because I talked about it for about three years until I actually did it. But the teal matches the like work in progress. Like I said, all the time, the teal matches the yeah. teal accents that I chose to do, which when you're taking on a project like this, important things to look at is like accents can really tie everything together so you pick a color or two colors and you make them the accent so I did things like this little mm. uh, down beautiful you know ornament here it has teal and purple in it so it ties in all the accents this chair is purple so very different style than my sort of French classical chairs but the Love color it. the color ties in together um, then you walk over here to my bookshelf and you see, I have teal accents on these books and I did that very purposefully. So, and then I have my teal pillow. Do, Do you have any suggestions together? for how, any suggestions for how people come up with their two colors? Well, what do you like? That's the suggestion. What do you like? What's going to make you feel happy to be looking at every single day of your life and what makes you feel peaceful and calm? So nice. I feel like mine are gray and pink. There you go. And that would be beautiful. All right, so Grace, let's get to the chic kitchen. and neutral. Yeah. So, hi, I'm saying hi to some people. Hello. I'm just. Oh, this is so fun to be with you. And I'm so happy it's nice out there. Oh my gosh. I know. I miss you. I can't wait until. Me too. You can travel oh, the again. It is lovely. Look at those cabinets. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it, it was in yeah. good enough shape. And then what I did is I painted all the cabinets. So I did do a little bit in here. I painted all the cabinets so they were fresh. But even little things like these little knobs, they were kind of cute. And they were here prior. Very. Um, Sophie asks, did I live in the apartment while I was renovating? Sophie, the answer is, fortunately, having family in the city, I lived with my 
parents while I was renovating. The renovation, you know, which was estimated to be perhaps four months, ended up, long story short, I wasn't in the apartment for about seven months. So that's something to keep in mind. When you're choosing a contractor, choose, get, get testimonials and find out who's going to stick to their word and who is strict about keeping to the timetable that they originally give you. So that's another important tip. But I stayed with my family. And then toward the end, I, I did live here. But construction dust is so intense that you have to have, it's so important to hire a construction specific cleaner afterward because you really can't live in that space with that type of dust um yeah so that's a great tip um yeah you know what i'm you know what i feel like could work on in this room if you wanted to do something else yes this i is feel the like house. the this teal wall it's so pretty i feel like the teal wall could become like functional like what if you built a floor to ceiling like very like uh minimal like narrow um sort of cabinet you know on the teal wall on the left I know, and I, please tell me, I want advice on what everyone thinks I should do with this because it needs something, it needs art, and I have a couple ideas. So. I also like the idea of you doing a full chalkboard. Like the whole thing's a chalkboard, you can put Ooh. your recipes. Ooh, that would be really fun. Inspiration, like, I feel like that room would be really cool. Wait, give us a pull, pull back on the kitchen, okay. So I'm gonna pull back, and the other thing I wanna just quickly show you, these little light fixtures, I just got them. Listen, everybody has a different taste, but they kind of, cool. I, these were like $150 a piece and uh, I, they, they just, I don't know. I thought they were fun. They feel like stars and they made the kitchen. They jazzed it up a little bit and they have this shadow on the ceiling that I thought was fun yes. uh, with the light. So they made this kitchen. The reason you're reacting to it, to it saying, oh, it, it looks, it looks good. It doesn't look that bad is because of the light fixtures and the paint. Other than that, it feels completely dated. And I know, but, but adding light fixtures, lighting so important in an apartment or a house. So if you add lighting to a space, it'll completely transform it. Like cool lighting, it'll completely transform it. So my kitchen Someone definitely did. felt way more dated before I put these lights in. Someone just picked up on the chalkboard idea and said, I had a chalkboard once in my first New York City apartment. It was my favorite part of the apartment. Yeah, I could see a chalkboard working well there. Yeah, that would be, thank you so much for that tip. I love that. And I'm going to look into that. I was thinking of putting three, like a map of the world, but, but uh, making it three panels. So it's a map of the world, but there are three panels of it just to create some sort of like one painting in the middle there. It, there's so much teal around it that it kind of wouldn't visually look great if it's just kind of one painting in the middle. So I wanted yeah. to break it up. And then I can pin everywhere I've traveled. That's what I was thinking. Or doing sun, moon, and stars. Like since you have, you know, as like one of my best friends is on here, Sarah, she's an astrologer. She's like exceptional at astrology if anyone wants mm -hmm. there. I need to interview Sarah for a number of reasons. I've been No, you need Sarah to interview Sarah. Sarah, Marguerite yeah. knows all about you. Both know all about each other. You take her on one of these lives and interview her for sure. Yeah. But... Haley, can you back us up so we're in the living room? Bring us back to the living room so we can see the kitchen from a distance. Oh, sure. I have to learn my video skills. I'm getting used to this. <laughs> okay, and now show us the whole, let's, let's get the whole living room. Go to your living room window and let's see the whole living room with that kitchen in the way back. Nice. Okay, great. Here we go. All right. So turn the camera a little bit to your left. Before I do that, can you see the purple now, Marguerite, compared to the oh, cream? Yes. I know that was such a cool thing that you did. You got like, it's it's not off-white in the sense that it's heading towards a beige spectrum. It's heading towards right. a purple spectrum. It's so genius. All right. So you got that, that teal, you got the living room. All right. This living room is lovely. So what do you Thank think about, you. The, how did you decide on the couch? Let's zoom into the couch a little bit. Okay, so most important elements that when you're doing interior design, from what I learned, is texture of fabric. You can do a lot with texture of fabric. Put the camera just... down a little bit, Haley. Yeah, it's a weird, yeah. Yep. Okay. So I was just sort of introducing oh. texture and fabric because this is sort of a velvet with a sheen. Yeah. And it brings the whole entire, it, it creates a fun element to the whole entire space and it makes the couch 20 times more beautiful just because of the velvet sheen. 
What do you think of reupholstering couches? I feel like everybody talks about it, but it's like expensive, right? It's expensive. So getting a quote to weigh out, like if you like the style of your couch or you really love, like for example, you know, I like the little feet on my couch. So if I wanted to do something different with the upholstering, I might be inclined to keep this couch and do something different with the upholstering. So look at your couch. Are there other elements to, to it that you like? Um, if you do, it may be worth doing real reupholstering, but you should get a quote and weigh out, you know, what makes most sense. Okay. And then this sheepskin pillow. So like sheepskin is really interesting. It like definitely, you know, it's either like a classic now, or it's like a very heavy trend. There's a lot of sheepskin and sheepskin ish things that like the quality is not good. So who do you trust when you're buying something that's sheepskin like that or like shaggy, whatever you call that material? Shaggy. Right. So that material it's, it's called mohair. Okay. And it's, it's just hair. It's just hair. So like this, whose hair, Haley, whose hair is it? Well, it's, it's a style of, you know, uh, you know, animal fur hair, but this is fake mohair because I didn't want to go the route of real animal hair. So I got one, you know, it's, it's fake, fake animal hair, but kind of fun looking. And I got this at West Elm. Okay. And you like it. I like it. Can I you like it, so. wash that pillow? You, it's funny because I'm looking into that right now. I, I washed my blanket recently. I washed the keel pillow, um, the cover, and then I was looking into whether this can be washed. I don't have the answer to that. It's a great question. Yeah. Do, you, um, do you love the blanket that you have? I love blankets in general. And yeah. obviously making a space feel comfortable and cozy is important. So I have two blankets because they mean that much to me. Yes. Um, this one's an awesome one. If anyone is looking for a blanket, let me see. I believe it's from Pottery Barn, but you see how the inside of this is Ooh. fuzzy. It's like um, fleece. It's like fleece inside of your blanket. So that one's real. That's one of my, the most comfortable blankets I've ever had, I believe from Pottery Barn and a friend gave it to me. And then this is also West Elm. It's a fake fur. So any of the, the vegan peeps out there, I, I hear you. It's yeah. a fake fur and it's, the most comfortable blanket Ooh. that I've ever had. So and the pottery barn one, like it hasn't pilled. No, not at all. And I nice. washed it. It's easy to wash. It's it's great. I like and that style, especially for your house. Definitely. Uh definitely. So I think it might be helpful for people to hear like where some of these pieces are from. And yeah. I would recommend like if you're looking to add some pieces or change some things. Um search these websites to see when they're doing deals like Memorial weekends coming up. So searching and seeing when they're doing big deals because at Jonathan Adler, I got 25% off. I struck on a holiday weekend and got a few pieces and it really worked out well numbers wise. So this is from Jonathan Adler. The couch is also from Jonathan Adler. And what I love about Jonathan Adler, speaking of his book is on my table, um, 100 ways to happy chic your life. What I love about Jonathan Adler is he, he was originally an artist. He molded, um, he was a craftsman. He molded, this was a, something he did, a hobby of his. Uh, he molded pottery. So he used his hands. He was an artist. He was creating something, but he also understood the importance of structure. And then he veered into, and he's a designer as well. And then he veered into doing furniture. So knowing the importance of having the artistry element in addition to knowing the importance of structure and that being a passion of yours because he was creating structure with his pottery yeah lends to making amazing furniture because you obviously I feel like, like the want... criticism of Jonathan Adler is that like one he can be like too much like he, can, he is like... no he has a very specific style and some of his stuff is certainly over the top and you know so I counterbalance that with you know trying to yeah, I, I chose certain pieces. Example. Your space is such a good example of incorporating his things, that true uh, mid-century vibe that he was so instrumental in creating, right? Right, exactly. So, and then also Lillian August is a great designer. They often have great sales and they have really good quality, very pretty pieces. I so love is, the table. It's gorgeous. Thank you. This is Lillian August, um, this piece. And then my bureau in the entry here is Lillian August. And if you go up close, you can see like talking about texture Ooh. and 
color, you can see there's like a gold tint to it, which makes it look really pretty when you're stepping several feet away. It's nice. much more interesting to look at because of the gold. Love so, that. So, yeah. Shall, shall I take you into the bedroom? The bedroom, if you wouldn't mind, okay. we would love it. All right. So this is my little, my little bedroom. Um, I have my little bear that my London friends gave me from Harrods, and I, I love oh, it. Um, that oops, bed sorry. Frame is so pretty. The bed frame is amazing. Oh, thank you. So the bed frame, um, Serena and Lily, they have incredible bed frames, really good quality. And this is, I thought this was so cute, my little, yeah, the little legs to the bed. Um, so Serena and Lily's another amazing resource. They also have incredible bedding too, and you can order online. So anyone that needs new bedding. Um, Bloomingdale's when they have incredible sales like Frette, which is a very yeah. high end brand. I'm, I'm somewhat obsessed with it. So I try to strike when they have great sales. But you know, we spend so much time in our bed having really good sheets. So I got all Frette stuff on a big sale at Bloomingdale's. Um, nice. And then my little crystal lamp, you know, this is an incredible book, by the way. It's a brand new book for anyone. I've suggested it to some people that were on this call. Good nice. quarantine read. And then, you know, I have some messy stuff going on in here, like some stuff that I need to go through. I love but your shades. Are those Roman shades? These shades up there. One is up and one is down. No, they're just, you know, roller blinds. Um, but this is my little desk and I love this chair and it has nice. a velvet seat so that like the texture texture is really important um as I've mentioned and then this mirror matches the chair cool so bring kind of tying things together and then I'll show you my bathroom which I renovated uh from scratch and someone had asked if I did the work myself I didn't do any of the work myself I hired someone you know I'm not skilled so I did my best here put this down I did my best to love the bathroom thank you so this was my little labor of love uh design project because I wanted it to feel it's a small bathroom so I wanted it to feel as luxurious as it could being very small and I chose this pretty nice this pretty design for the floor. And then I did a blue border to sort of like mirror the gray blues in my bedroom. And another tip when you have the Ooh. area, if you have this cut out in your shower, which is so helpful because that's where you can put products. Yes. Have it mirror and match something else in your bathroom. So that oh, design. I love that tip. Yeah. That design matches the floor. And then this vanity, this was actually a pottery barn vanity that I got and the little legs mirror the same legs of my my bed awesome so kind of tying everything in aesthetically uh this is the vanity and these little lights uh the other thing i want to tell you whenever you're renovating spraying for spraying for the extra money to get the shower head because if you don't do it, the you know the one where you can move it around not, not the shower head in the wall, but like this, this second one that I have here, I can pull it with but the handheld. It's called the handheld. Spring the extra money to get that done when you're renovating because if you don't, if you don't do it, it's a mess to try to do it in the future. And it is a little bit more costly. So a lot of people will decide not to do it. And I'm telling you, it's worth it doing it. it it's, it's the extra money you should spend. Um, you, what do you like to use it for? Like you use it to wash the shower? You use it to wash the shower. And if you don't have that, like these aren't the things you think about mm -hmm. when you're initially renovating, but then when you're living somewhere, you remember things you wish you would have thought about, like making sure you have this cut out. Yes, um, I love that. You know, having a handheld in the shower, because if you don't have that, first of all, I use it sometimes to, you know, clean my hair or whatever, but frankly, I use it mainly to clean my bathroom and clean my tub. And if you don't have that, then what do you, what do you do? You have to bring a bucket into your bathroom and like pour water in there to clean your tub. So it's just, yeah, something helpful to have. You're not, you saying that you use it to clean the bathroom floor, right? No, I use it in the tub, like to make yeah. sure I like when I'm scouring and cleaning. Yeah. Um, oh, another thing I want to mention, if you have a small space, it's like 
thinking where to spend money, where to spend less money and where to sort of splurge. If you have a small space, but you want to make it sparkle and really luxurious, you can spring for really nice materials because they're not going to cost as much in a very postage stamp style small space. But they make the space feel so much. Uh, yeah, they, they make the space feel like another level of quality that you can't achieve with sort of lower end middle level material. So that's where you should spring. So what I did was this, it's hard to see on the video, but this marble, because some people will do marble, like they'll do marble. I'm trying to show you like half of their bed, mm -hmm. half of their bathroom, and then they'll do paint for the rest mm -hmm. of it. Um, they'll do paint. When you have such a small bathroom, making it marble all the way up to the ceiling makes it feel so much more luxurious. So if Love you're going it. for that, it's not that much extra money in the grand scheme. And I recommend springing for that and then saving other costs elsewhere. So this marble, you can't really tell in the video, but it, it has a sparkle and shine. So like yes. your Instagram filter was shine, making your face sparkle. That's what my marble looks like, which isn't translating over the video. No, it but, is. Um, I can tell it's gorgeous. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So that's where I chose to spend a little more, but it ultimately wasn't that much because it's a tiny little space. Pull so, us away from, I want to see the bathroom from when you're standing in your bedroom. Show us how the bathroom sparkles from the outside. Yeah. I know what you mean. It's just, it's just so beautiful. And you're saying Thank the only you. reason you, the only reason you said in case I'm missing something that, you know, in a small space spending on high quality um, materials is not as much as just because there's not so much space. You don't have to do so much f square footage of the high quality material. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. That is correct. That is correct. So how about that painting Haley above your couch? Or print. You're going to laugh. You're going to laugh because while I was, while I was at Jonathan Adler making those, those, that, that discount day where I made those furniture choices, they had this painting there and I became obsessed with it and yeah, I never so thought peaceful. I'd buy art. Yeah. And it, it has a pretty sheen to it. So that shininess matches the couch's shininess. And I just love looking at it every day. It doesn't get old. What's cool about it is it has canvas on the back and then it's framed in lucite and then you have the piece of art on top of it so nice love yeah, it so much your apartment is amazing a little gem Aww. jewel thank you thank you it's it's hard in here i'm going to do this so we can talk about this it's it's hard in new york city because we live we as a society like often live in smaller spaces and if you have a studio or one bedroom i was excited to do this to show people that there's a lot you can do in smaller spaces and giving yes. some tips on tips on where to where to spend the money and where to save on the money and kind of weighing all of that out love it is so much here yeah um i want to do i want to set up like a next call with you like think about it because it'd be cool if like in a month you could take us through like one of the spaces that you're like leasing or that you're like mm -hmm. trying to sell or yeah so think absolutely. about it and tell me what would be a good idea because I love touring and learning with you like this awesome no that would okay. be a lot of fun perfect and okay. I appreciate you and your time you I appreciate you you're the best I'll talk to you soon thank you talk to you thank soon you, Haley. Bye. bye bye everyone bye